Hello, Internet friends. Today I'm going to show you how to make these cool Christmas decorations. They are 3D printed trees with color changing stars on the top, and they're painted and wired up out of tea lights. It takes a little bit of effort to put them together. I think the result's pretty good. I figured I'd make a little video and show you how they go together, so let's get started. So in order to make this holiday decoration, you're going to need a few parts. First of all, the tree itself. This is 3D printed, as I mentioned. After a few tries, playing around with different ways of doing it, I got this working. And now I can just keep pressing the button as many times as I want. And I can get more and more and more of these things, as you see. So, you need the trees. You also need these LED tea lights. The ones that I have here are the Instapark LCL series. They come with a flashing or flickering yellow LED in them, so part of the process here is to take that out. Speaking of LEDs, you'll also need the LEDs that you want to use. In this case, I have three millimeter slow color changing ones. You could use whatever you want, of course, whatever works for you. You'll need a soldering iron to put that stuff together. You'll need some wire. You will also need some super glue in order to put the star on the top. Another 3D printed piece. These are, um, these are printed with Talman tea glaze, or tea glass, however you pronounce that. It's nice and shiny, and I like the effect that it gives when, when you light it up. This is paint from the craft store. It has a gold and a silver color that I've been using. And then just to make it a little more interesting, I also got some glitter paint. And then you'll probably also want some spare CR2032 batteries because you'll go through a lot of them. Now a lot of these steps, of course, can be done in any order, but I'm just going to go in sort of the logical step-by-step -step process here. The first thing you need to do is take your tea light. We have no interest in the flickering yellow light there. So we're just gonna, we're gonna take this thing apart, remove the little flame thing, and remove the LED from inside here. And these are fairly straightforward to open. Uh, they have some little feet on the bottom, at least this model does. And I find that if you grasp the feet with some pliers, or one of the feet, and pull. So there's your two pieces. The, uh, the top cap, I'll call it the top part of this, it's just a plastic thing with this little flame thing in it and the, the base or the bottom part here has the actual guts, the battery holder, uh, the switch, and the flickering LED soldered onto it. So first let's address the cap. This is very straightforward. Inside of here there are a couple of little tabs that hold this flame part in. So if you squeeze the tabs you can just pull that out and throw it away. So we don't need that part. Now what we're going to do here is actually use this hole. So we'll leave the hole there, and when we put this back together, we're going to thread the wire through that hole, and then up the inside of the tree, and out the top where we will mount our LED. One lead of the LED is merely underneath of this little metal tab that makes contact with the, with the negative of the battery. So you just fold the tabs in here and this thing will fall out like so. Oops. So there's the little little negative terminal. Set that aside. We're going to use that in a minute. But now that frees up the LED, or at least the bottom of the LED. So then take your favorite pliers and just bend. I'm I'm telling you something really obvious here, but what the heck, I'm trying to make a YouTube how-to video, so you, you, have to, you have to explain everything, right? Um, it's really hard to do this on camera. I've done dozens of these. Anyway, if you, if you bend that lead back straight, then you can turn this around and pull and take the LED there. See, that's poked through a hole there, and it is no longer poked through the hole. So that's one side. Now the other side is soldered onto this switch, so we're simply going to desolder that. Alrighty, I've stuck the base of the tea light in this vise, and we just are going to remove the LED that's soldered to that switch. Um, 
fairly simple procedure. If you bend the if you bend the leg straight, again I've got this in an awkward angle, but uh, for me to work, but hopefully a little better for the camera. So the plan here now this the this leg the LED is coming straight through there. So I haven't done a lot of these. This really is not very difficult. My hand will be in the way here for the shot, but I'm just going to pull this while heating this, and it will pop right out. Voila. So now you've got a uh, flickering yellow LED that you can save for later use. And you have a, a base with, with a switch on it and a battery holder. All set to go. Now if, if the uh, LED left a bunch of solder in the hole there, then you might want to go ahead and use your very fine Japanese solder sucker to clean up that hole. But, well, let's just do this for you know, for thoroughness here. So, we'll heat that, put this on there, press the button. Man, this thing works great. You know those old blue solder suckers that we all had from Radio Shack back in the day? They kind of sort of work, but it turns out that the, the concept actually does work really well if you get a good one. This Japanese one, I don't know, is this a, yeah, it's an engineer brand. Man, engineer brand tools, anything made by engineer, just buy it. It's everything they make is is tremendously awesome. Um, anyway, we'll set that aside. That is completely clean and ready to be used for our project. At this point, you can go ahead and put the little metal uh, negative contact back in there. So now we're going to attach the wire to this using this tree as a guide. We'll just measure a decent amount little bit of slack there, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this here, right there. Perfection is not required, but, um, you know, make sure you give yourself enough to work with. I'm going to go ahead and split this every second wire so that I get five pairs here, and then we'll just go ahead and pull this apart. Set these aside for later. So we're just making one right now. And now same sort of deal here. I need to split these and strip them. So now we just want to tin these. Makes everything much easier later on. Stick them in the vise. Grab some solder. Make sure you got some solder on your soldering iron so that everything heats nicely and just blob some on there. That's fine. Now I'm going to connect this wire to the base. This one has a uh, three position, uh, sorry, it's a two position switch. There's center and there's off and on. So if you solder the wire to the wrong end of this, then it'll be on when the switch says off and vice versa. Now it doesn't really matter, I suppose. The switch will still work, but I like the switch to work the way it's labeled, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and be careful. I happen to know from having done a bunch of these that oriented this way, this bottom terminal is the on one, so we're going to use that one. And then the negative will just be the, uh, the tab here from the negative terminal. So I've decided arbitrarily to use, on this one I've got a black and a white wire. I'm going to use the white wire as my positive and the black wire as my negative, as my hand is in the way there. Okay, so the way, I'm, the way I'm doing this is I've just shoved the wire in the hole on the, on the switch. I'm just going to give it a little heat and just let it melt on there. And this is not mil-spec soldering here at all. Um, all I really care is that it is connected. It's, uh, it's not going anywhere now. Solder melted, resolidified. it's all good. Um, this, this isn't going to move when it's all put together. It's going to be glued together, so it's not really a big deal. And then again, I'm going to connect the negative terminal to the to this tab here. I can press this down and I'm just going to give a little bit of heat. Solder flows onto the tab, solidifies, and it's solidly on there and we're good to go. So that's that end of the wire. For the next step in the process, as they say in Canada, we're going to attach the LED to the other end of the wire. The easiest way for this next part is if you put, actually put the battery back in. So now that we've finished with the base, if I can figure this out, there we go. 
battery door is a little tricky. Battery door back in, switch this on, and this way, put that on there, and you can tell that's right because it lights up. If I had it the wrong way around, then nothing happens, right? So you just do that as you need it when you get to this step. Now what I like to do at this point to make my life a little bit easier is to measure, I sort of put this here against the tree and I think about, you know, with this wire coming up to the top, how long do I really want the legs to be on the LED? Probably not that long. That's, that's going to give me a bunch of excess wire. So I know if I've got that much, then I can trim these. And I do, I know this is probably a completely unnecessary step, but I, I look at each one individually and I see how much slack I've got and I kind of make an estimate as to how much lead I can remove there. Of course, maintaining the, the long short leg, not that it really matters. And uh, you know, as always, when you're cutting component leads like this, hold on to it or they'll fly across the room. So I've taken that off, shorten the legs of the LED, and now we'll just tin it. So LED placed in the vise, we'll just apply some solder to the end of the legs so that it's very easy to get the wires on. And again, here we are, we can do our test. This is the correct way around. So I make a mental note that the white wire goes on the longer one and the black goes on the shorter. And so now, again, very awkward soldering on camera, but it's pretty easy at this point. All you have to do is just get that on there, heat it up, hold it on, let it cool, We're good to go. And then the other side, the nice thing about having the switch on at this point is you know it's still working and you know you're done. You know you got it when that is connected and it's lit, it stays lit. It's good to go. Not the world's best soldering job, but it doesn't matter and it was done for the video. So here's our completed base with wire at this point. Just put this through the hole and clip the base back in. Be just a little bit tricky, but I probably could have fussed around with this tree model and managed to get a hole in it, but it does not come that way, so I'm just I just use my note that I'm not using my quality Knipex side cutters here. I keep a separate set of cutters that I just use for uh modifying 3D prints so that I can get them all chewed up. But the idea here is just cut the top off the tree, leaving a hole in there. If necessary, I, I use the, the cutters to kind of ream it out a little bit, just make sure that it's about the right size. And that's going to go through there and come out the top nicely and we will be good to go. This next part can be a little frustrating. It kind of requires a lot of hands. I only have two, but we do the best we can. But the goal here is to get this wire up through the tree, get the LED poking out the top, get it to stay there, hence our friend, the super glue. I really like this uh, Loctite liquid control super glue. It's got little squeezy things on the side so that you can get very fine control over it. It also uh, has a cap that works so you don't end up using the bottle once and then throwing it away. Uh, and so also, in order to get the tree to stay on the base, we super glue it to the base. I do these things all in, in sort of one pass. I hold on to this, oh, first I gotta open my super glue and get everything ready ahead of time so that you can actually, um, can actually do all of this with your limited set of hands. So I take this LED, I put it through there, and I'm just going to go ahead and use my fancy super glue and give it a dab. So you put some glue right around the LED. Plastic super glues really well. This is, by the way, this is uh, HIPS filament, high impact polystyrene. 
in, I think, Forest Green is the name of the color, something like that. So I wait here maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, let that super glue begin to set up, at least enough that it's, that it's stuck on there so you can pull the pliers back out. Sorry, pull the tweezers back out. Did I call them pliers? They're tweezers. Um, in this case, I don't, I don't think I waited long enough, but it doesn't matter. The, there's enough pressure on the wire that it's not going anywhere for the moment. Applying some super glue to the base. Enough that, enough that it's enough, right? But not that it's running all over the place. So get some of that on there. Now, this, there's an alignment issue here that's kind of a pain. You want to get the base centered with respect to the tree. It can take a little bit of effort, and in this case I failed. You might be able to see there, I don't know, that it's off to the side a little bit. I mean, it's, it's a homemade decoration, so it's going to be imperfect, but that glue, for some reason, that connection between whatever this tealite material is and the hips, uh, it's almost instant. As soon as the as soon as they touch each other, they are they are stuck on. So you have pretty much one chance. Take the super glue, the inside of the two bottom legs of the star where it's going to be touching the tree. Obviously, you want to glue the part that's going to have some contact. Um, give it a nice bunch of glue there. I'm trying to switch hands here, but normally I just do that in one shot and just shove that on. Push that down on there and again hold it for, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds or so. There we go. So that now that didn't pop up again, so I know that the glue is set well enough. And this one is done. Uh, at least this star is done. So switch it on and just confirm that none of the electrical stuff has come off in the process. Recap the glue. And the only thing left on this now is to paint it. We're going to do the painting relatively quickly. They have that expression like watching paint dry for a reason. Um, I've been, when I've been painting these, I've been using these cotton swabs um, because I have literally a thousand of them. So let's see. I mostly use them for cleaning circuit boards, but in this case, I, uh, anyway, you, must, you want to stir up your paint and very simple. I mean, the pattern I've been using here is I just, I like to uh, do every other one, gold and silver. So, find little dots on the thing and dab it. See? Then skip one, dab it. So, gold, gold. And now we're just going to run along and get all of the, get all the ones that are not gold. That needs a little bit to dry, a little bit of time to dry, and then I'll come back and I'll put the glitter on. You really have to stir it up, and even even using it for a few minutes, the glitter kind of kind of starts to fall back to the bottom. But if there's anything good about it, it's that it really takes very little, just the tiniest dab on there, and you see little sparkles. Pick up some of that silver and try not to make a mess on this one. Okay, that's it. So this little tree is done. I'm going to try and zoom in really well so you can maybe see the see the sparklies. And just slowly rotate this and uh, see if you can see any of that glitter effect from the fancy paint. Turn the tree on as well. If I can find the switch. There we go. So there it is. Nice little decoration. Takes a bit of work to make and a, a bunch of steps, but uh, there you go.